Hi, I'm Manuel. I'm Pedro. I'm Arthur. And we're here to talk about transition metals, more specifically, copper. First, we used balance and spatula to prepare a dilute solution of copper sulfate. We prepared 4 grams of the compound and then added 250 milliliters of distilled water. The simplest ion that copper forms in solution is the typical blue hexaqua copper ion. And now we add sodium hydroxide. The hydroxide ions are going to remove the hydrogen ions from the water ligands. And once hydrogen ions have been removed from two of the water molecules, you are left with a neutral complex. This will form a precipitate. The precipitate formed by the addition of sodium hydroxide will be light blue. Now we'll add ammonia. A small amount of ammonia will act as a base and the hydrogen ions are going to be pulled off the hexa-aqua ion to give a neutral complex. Now we add excess ammonia, which will dissolve the precipitate and replace water as a ligand to give the tetraamine di-aqua copper ion. This excess ammonia will make a dark blue solution. Now we add concentrated hydrochloric acid to a solution containing hexa-aqua copper ions. The six water molecules will be replaced by fluorochloride ions. This reaction is reversible, and due to this, you get a mixture of colors due to both of the complex ions. The hydrochloric acid will create tetrachlorocuprate ions, which have been described as olive green or yellow. And now we add sodium carbonate. Carbonate ions will simply give you a precipitate that you can think of as copper carbonate. The carbonate ions will create a light blue precipitate. Historically, Copper was the first metal to be worked by people. The discovery that it could be hardened with a little tin to form the alloy bronze gave the name to the Bronze Age. Traditionally, it has been one of the metals used to make coins, along with silver and gold. However, it is the most common of the three and therefore the least valued. Most copper is used in electrical equipment such as wiring and motors. This is because it conducts both heat and electricity very well and can be drawn into wires. It also has uses in construction, for example roofing and plumbing, and industrial machinery such as heat exchangers. Copper sulfate is used widely as an agricultural poison and as an algaecide in water purification. Copper compounds such as felling solution are used in chemical tests for sugar detection. Copper also has a very important biological role. An adult human needs around 1.2 mg of copper a day to help enzymes transfer energy in cells. Excess copper, however, is toxic. Copper metal does occur naturally, but by far the greatest source is in minerals such as chalcopyrite and bornite. Copper is obtained from these ores and minerals by smelting, leaching and electrolysis.